That was freaky. Yeah, and then Eddie's just doing backflips in a banana suit on on Sky's. Are you? Yeah, I don't know. That's not the version of the Incredible Five. The Midwest, home sweet home in good old Indiana, a place of small towns, cozy families gathered together, and fields of corn and rustic woods. But like any town, there is a dark underbelly that often goes unnoted. We are part of that darkness. We lurk in the shadows to bring you the best in horror, metal, and stories of the grotesque. This is Blood in the Cornfields. All right, everyone. Welcome to uh, latest episode of Blood in the Cornfields. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a couple people with me, so I figure I'll start off with uh, y'all introducing yourself. Mm-hmm. So go ahead. Yeah. So this is Ivy. You all know me. Uh, we have our kids here. Yes, it is a kid-friendly episode uh, this time, definitely. Yeah, and we have a special guest with us. Hey, everybody. It's Big Earl here. All right. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. And I know you got your special little guy with you today. Absolutely. And Mark, <laughs> yes. you I have, have my daughter uh, going by Coraline. It's ah. the name she picks. So, yes, I have her with uh, mm-hmm. with us today. We're all parents here, yeah. especially here at this podcast. <laughs> I now am the newest parent. You guys can teach me a thing That's or two. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm too busy, Dad, to have to have come up with a clever nickname for myself here. <laughs> so that, that should tell you something. Usually I'm on top of these things. In fact, did my son come up with one with, for himself no, or not didn't. yet? No, he just said, I'm just nope. going to go by my regular name. Yep. Oh, oh, thank just, you. All right. Okay, well, fine. All right. <laughs> pulling out the government name. Playing it, playing it straight. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. So uh, part of the episode here, we're going to kind of split it up. So half we're going to be talking with our kids about um, things with, you know, they find scary and and all that sort of stuff. And then uh, the other half is going to be talking about our own personal paranormal experiences and stuff like that. So it should be an interesting one for Mm -hmm. you. So Absolutely. Yeah. um, I can go first on personal paranormal experience. So I had a pretty cool one. Mine takes place in Key West, Florida, and I actually got to meet Robert the Doll, which Mm -hmm. um, if some of you don't know that name, that's fine. Um, He is one of the most uh, famous dolls out there. So kind of the story behind him is in the 1920s, there was a a young boy named uh, Robert Eugene Otto, and he used to go by Eugene. And he had a stuffed animal sent from Germany over to him. Um, They don't really know exactly how there's rumors floating around that like a, you know, someone who was a housemaid put a curse on it, like a voodoo hex, like a Haitian woman. Um, For everything I read, that's kind of just BS. It's just all Mm. fluff and kind of just to add Mm. to the steak and stuff. And I'm sure it's also slightly racism attached to it. Like it was with the witch trials. Absolutely. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So it started out with um, Eugene getting this doll. And from the beginning, he stopped going by Eugene and started going by Robert. But then he also named the doll Robert. So, which is interesting, Um, kind of like almost a flip like that. So early on in Robert's life, uh, there was a death in the family and it wasn't reported. And the only way that um, researchers know this is because there was a census filled out. I want to say in like, I don't know the exact date, but then five years later, there was another census and the name was not on there. And so one uh, researcher theorizes that there was a young death in the in the Otto family and that he suspects that the soul of the child could have leapt into the doll and the reason being is because there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes on so throughout Eugene's life he would do things and say Robert made me do it so he would like pull pranks or do mischievous things and say like Robert made me do it um and then that stayed with him through life for a while. And as he matured and got older, he did break away from Robert. And I think he became an artist, I want to say in New York. Mm -hmm. And then later on in life, he moved back when he was, uh, and then he was married. And then he brought the doll back into his life. And then still with his wife would in his older age say like, Robert did this or Robert made me do this. So he kept the doll with him his entire life. Well, no. So the, the doll stayed in Key West. So he, I don't know the exact age he moved away yeah. and became an artist, but then he came back in life and, and the doll came back into his life. Huh. Yeah. And then he would blame, you know, events with Robert. And so throughout the years, um, me, giving me mad Chucky vibes. Yes. Yeah, so, and, and that's so what Robert leaves. The doll stays in Key West. Years later, he comes back 
And there's still and the doll. They get reconnected somehow. Mm-hmm. I feel yeah. like there's a bit. I would love to that's find so out Chucky how that. That's, that's, so, like so that's, 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 that's where they draw yeah. the Chucky parallels. That's where they draw the Chucky parallels. Yeah. But from everything I've read, the creator of Chucky. It does not have anything to do with Robert. It was not based off that. It's Never merely cited coincidental. Never an influence. Yes, uh, it's merely coincidental. Interesting. Yeah, so um, there's all sorts of reports of people working on the house and swearing Robert's in one corner of the house, them taking a lunch break, coming back, and he's in the other corner. And there's all sorts of reports like that where he's, you know, looking one direction one time and another direction another. So kind of brings us up to current day. So um, this doll was placed in a museum on the on the coast in Key West. Um, it was a military fort, if, I'm, if I understand right. Well, I visited. Oh, so wow. Yeah, it's really cool. So when you go into Key West, you go in, there's a little gift shop, all that sort of stuff you pay, and then you kind of walk through. It's just hallways, and it's not a very big museum, and there's like some cool stuff, you know, Key West artifacts and stuff. And when you get to the area that Robert is, this is where my paranormal experience starts. So Robert is in the center of like a long hallway. And That's already terrifying. Yeah, right. So there's like you round the corner and then there's stuff to the left, like a an old dive suit. And then there's stuff to the right, you know, like a, mm-hmm. I don't know, a, a, an anchor or some, some mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. I don't know. Something nautical. Some yeah. nautical theme. <laughs> I don't know. Stuff. And then just stuff a long, West. <laughs> long empty corridor that just nautical pirate stuff as far as the eye can yeah. see until you go down. And then all of a sudden, a doll. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so you go in and then there's like, um, when... The floor is like just regular flooring. Um, Mm -hmm. And then there is a literal border of so like a change in texture. So there's brick. If I remember, it's brick. But like it, there's a brick border to where it signifies where Robert is. It's almost like they cut out the wall Uh and they laid it with brick. And then Robert's in an area and he's in a glass case. So the reason that I make the significance of that is so I'm walking with a friend of mine and it's a... You know, you turn the corner and then you see Robert. So you like walk towards him. So the moment I cross what would be the threshold. So I step over that brick. I immediately got an instant head rush as if I was going to pass out. But, you know, when you're going to pass out and you have the tingly feeling and the blackness in your eyes Mm -hmm. did not have the blackness in my eyes, but I got the tingly feeling. Oh, yeah. It was like when I say literally cross the threshold, literally cross the threshold. When my foot stepped over from the normal flooring over the brick right there, like it was crazy. And I didn't say anything because I just thought like, oh, it was like a head rush or something. And, you know, I didn't link it to him or anything like that. And I. I didn't want to say anything to my friend because I didn't want to <laughs> I like, freak right, 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 yeah. whatever, dude. So um, we get in there and then Robert's in a glass case in the middle. And <clears throat> if you know the story of Robert, you get told it. So the thing that's really interesting about Robert is he has a playful spirit. Um, some people believe that there's multiple entities in the doll. Some of them are playful. Some of them are actually spiteful and vengeful. Mm-hmm. And the the lore of Robert is that you have to ask his permission if you're going to take a picture or record him. And if you don't, he will play tricks on you. So the wall is has a TV in handwritten letters of people writing Robert apologizing, saying, like, we took your picture and didn't ask, and this horrible crap happened to us. Huh. Like, God. all these horrible things. And it's not one or two wow. or three. It is hundreds and probably thousands So instead of, of a chain letter, it's like a chain bulletin board yeah. where you just make your men's yeah, Robert. There's so many. Yeah, so the sorry, man. yeah, there's so many over the years that they have it playing on a monitor. And they have this, like, creepy... Huh. Uh, music box kind of playing and stuff like nice. that. If I can find it, we may leave it in like the the episode notes and stuff like that That'd of cool. me taking a video of Robert. So I cross the threshold and I know the you know the lore and all that sort of stuff. And so like I didn't take a picture of him. And me and my friend just kind of like walked around. It was like ah whatever. And then we left. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like walking and I'm like no why didn't I take a picture? Like why didn't I take a video? You know like nah it was, I don't know if I was just like trigger shy or like i don't know so we come back in and so i'm like all right i'm gonna film robert so robert is notorious notorious for messing with electronics like they tell you this it's it's written in every book like it's one of the most common things so i'm like all right cool 
So I talked to Robert. I'm like, hey, it's Mark again. Um, I didn't take his picture this first time, but I thought like I'd introduce myself, which is kind of weird talking no, to an no, adult. That makes sense, yeah. especially if there's entities attached to it. No, I'd introduce myself yeah. to it. Better like, safe than sorry. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So I said, hey, you know, Robert, it's Mark again. Um, I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a video of you. I'd like to take a video of you. And I said, if uh, you do not want me to, you have my permission, you can shut my camera down and I won't take a picture of you. So I go pull out my camera and it's an Android. So it has the, the camera icon. When I clicked mm. on the camera icon, it went black. So my huh. camera did okay. not even populate on my phone. It literally went black. The entire black. app just. No, the entire, the entire phone, phone seized up. So huh. I'm like, could be coincidence. Yeah, could right. be, mm-hmm. could be coincidence. Right, right. I'm gonna try so again. I'm like, here, let me step out of his area because now I'm thinking, all right, I had a head rush when I first stepped in here. Like maybe something else is going on, you know, mm-hmm. so. I like stepped out. My phone still didn't work. So I had to walk down to the end of the hall, reset my phone. So then I came back and I said, you know, hey, Robert, it's Mark again. That was a nice trick. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, I'd like to film you so that I can post on my social media so that more people can learn about you. So I said, but if you shut my camera down this time, I promise I will not ask to to film you again. So I pulled it out. Camera worked fine. I videoed him for about 45 seconds. You need to know your true intentions. Yeah, <laughs> right. He's yeah. testing, testing you, basically. Yeah, yeah. So I did. I videoed him. Um, everything went fine. It was mm-hmm. pretty crazy. Uh, yeah, and, and then I like went into the gift shop and bought everything hook, line, and sinker. Bought yeah, the book. Bought that's a t-shirt. Fun, man. <laughs> hey, good yeah, job, so, Robert. Uh, yeah, right. And, and it's good. And, and Key West is such an interesting place. It's one of the oldest cities in Florida. It's the most southern point of the, point of the United States. Mm-hmm. I think it's 90 miles away, 90 or 60 miles away from Cuba. Um, best Cuban sandwich I've ever had in my oh, entire that life. Good, oh, man. That sounds so good. I, right I, got, now. I was so touristy. I got a Cuban sandwich and Cuban coffee both like the best I've ever had. And it was, um, there's the, the main downtown streets, but then they have like restaurants that are kind of off the beaten path a little bit in mm-hmm. downtown. So you'll have to like walk down an alleyway and stuff like that. So I got some, uh, some of those, I always go to like the not so chainy, like something that's kind of off the beaten path a little bit. Mm-hmm. So yeah, but that's QS is, it. It was, it was such a rad city. And I went on a haunted tour where you're on like the big bus and they drive around. Nice. Oh yeah. Cool, yeah. A lot of cool ghost stories in that town. Um, and there's a lot with the military too. Oh, nice. Uh, there's another guy that was in Key West and he's a guy, I'll have to research it and probably talk about it another episode, but he, um, he's the guy that kept his wife's body for like forever, for like a long, long time. Mm-hmm. And he like, I don't even remember. I'll I'll get more into it, but I, I know roughly about it, and I've heard the story. But anyway, there's a another famous case from Key West that I'm sure I'll probably talk about. So, nice. um, yeah, that was my experience with uh, Robert the Dog. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. Well, well done, Mark. The, uh, <laughs> one of the core tenets of horror is that if you want to live, you follow the rules. Yeah, and right. you did no, a great him. job following the, the directions and following the rules to make sure that you didn't have to have your apology letter posted up on the monitor <laughs> right. yes. no for all of us to see and hear about in perpetuity going forward. Uh, yeah. So. Especially if, like, you know, you mentioned, I was going to say, like, okay, did you ask him, like, could we do this for our podcast, man? Like, I didn't. So, hey, I'm rolling the dice, but it's on me. Okay, but Uh, I'm worried about (laughs) me, man. I'm worried about me. I'm involved, dude. (laughs) If he didn't get permission for for all of us, technically, it's only stated that you have to ask his permission (laughs) if you take his picture. So talking about him is totally fine. No, I mean like if we were to use him on the podcast, if we use something, do his powers go from Key West, Florida? If we we play that video up here, is all of a sudden in Northern Indiana? Man, I I am Latina and super. Superstitious as, but we're good. Not, oh, we're sorry, we're gonna bleep that yeah, out. This like, uh, it's a friendly episode. Yeah, this is I am episode. suspicious. <laughs> so suspicious. We're good because if you remember <laughs> the video that I would post, I already asked Robert for his permission. Oh, he's on record. He's got to respect so, yes. that. So we're good. He's. I'm. We're holding them to it. All right. It. Well, there you uh, go. The papa Yes. Superstitious. Okay. All right. That's good. I throw some salt over my shoulder. I think we're good. All right. Yeah. Well, as far as param- paranormal experiences for myself, I'm actually going to have to think on that one. I wasn't prepared That's okay. for uh, that topic today, but 
what I do love is uh, hearing you talking about the history of Key West there. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife and I actually honeymooned in Savannah, Georgia a little oh, bit. Savannah we flew so down nice. to Orlando and did a road trip on the way back. Yeah. So we stopped at Savannah for a couple of days and did a haunted tour there. And uh, apparently the most haunted city in America. Wow. Savannah, Georgia. So we did a haunted that. tour there. And you want to talk about a rich history and a deeply tragic history on numerous levels. Uh, the stories around there might be worthy of a podcast in and of itself. But yeah. hearing what you had to say about Key West really kind of brought those memories back as far as what you go and what you see. And the cool thing about when you go on these haunted tours in Savannah is they have these little town squares that you go through that are each maybe a half mile or so down apart down through the historic district. Mm -hmm. And so the tour is basically based on going through each one of the t one of the squares from the other one. But when you go, it's got a soft lighting and it just has the light and hanging down. And so it really sets the stage for it and gets you in a great horror atmosphere to them when you go yes. see and hear the tragic stories that come along with it. It really does kind of blow your mind. And then you think about it. And a lot of the things that happened at that city, it was a port city, a couple few hundred years of history. Um, as you mentioned earlier with the racism aspect, mm -hmm. long history yeah, of yeah. racism oh, as well down there. And so it. it's, you know, to hear that and to see it up close and still see those buildings still standing, to still see, you know, a historical house built from the profits off of that. And then you hear some of the misery that had happened on top of that. It really just is, you know, kind of mind blowing. One yeah. of the uh, one of the components of it, uh, you're walking along and basically there was I can't remember if it was a famine or a plague that had hit them in the late 1800s. And if there's any char if there's any. Uh, Savannah folk that are listening and I butcher this my apologies in advance <laughs> but you know, long story short basically they ran out of room in the city cemetery and so it basically outgrew its walls and so Ooh. by the time we you're listening to this you know you, you're standing you see the fence and you see where the graves and such are then you find out that you're actually standing on them too because they didn't uh, they had to shift them. They, they, it, it shifted over yeah. time. And yep. so you're actually standing on some of those graves, even though you're not technically in it. That makes because sense. Because of how much it took up down there. And, makes sense. Okay. you know, one of the, um, I won't spoil, again, if you're on the fence on this tour, please go take them. It's yeah. an incredible experience. The only one I'll, I'll spoil slightly is that, you know, there is a house from the, uh, book and also the Clint Eastwood movie uh, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. Oh, okay. And uh, during the construction of this, a couple of kids were up there. I want to say they were adolescents, preteens. And one of the kids said, you know, basically we were up on top of the roof of this stately house. And all of a sudden he looked over at his friend and his friend just wasn't there anymore. Physically he was there, but oh. something was off yeah. uh -huh. and gone and he sat there and watched his friend go over the side of oh my god the, of the house uh -huh. off the roof as they were constructing this and impaled himself and died on the wrought iron fence that was underneath. oh that's crazy. man that's awful and the crazy thing about it is when you look at the angle of how he fell off it would have been hard for him to have fallen off because he would have had to have fallen in in order to land the way that he did, like the angle of where how he landed wasn't correct for how it should have been from oh, what the story nuts. said. Yeah. Like oh, I said, really, really nuts. I actually want to look more into it because it was just intriguing to hear about. But yeah. uh, the gentleman is actually still in town. I think he was a taxi driver or something at the oh, point in time, wow. living with having seen his friend do this. That is so sad. Crazy. Oh my gosh. So yeah, like I said, I didn't have time to think of paranormal experiences for myself, but yeah. it, that kind of came to mind as you know hearing that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, seeing that really just sent a chill down my spine. Ooh, yeah. And again, the atmosphere of it, it's hot, it's muggy. Mm -hmm. You just get that low hum and that noise that you get when you're in that when yeah. you're in that region at night yeah. with just the mossy light and just hanging down and the lights yeah. slowly coming through. And, yeah, it's like the cre creepiest ghost story you ever heard but mm -hmm. it's real yeah. it's history that's nuts yeah i've been to savannah and it was a while ago but the thing that struck me about savannah is the moss trees mm -hmm. like it's very beautiful and i've never been to new orleans but mm -hmm. when i went to savannah in my head i was like to me this what 
feels like what New Orleans would look yeah. like. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. While you're describing it, because I've never been there, I'm like, this is the haunted mansion. That's what this <laughs> that's is. Totally, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm with you, Mark. That's totally the sense. Is if you weren't in New Orleans, you would think Savannah's historical district is what New Orleans ought to be. Yeah. Mm. From an atmosphere perspective yeah. and like the story perspective of the whole thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And another before we get into you, another quick yeah. thing that was really cool. Um, Key West has uh, it's one of the few last remaining above above ground graveyards. And wow. It's really interesting. No way. So yeah, my friend huh. lived right next That's to cool. it. So um, <laughs> like we were kind of going around through the graveyard, just like looking at stuff because it's very beautiful. Like all this above ground stuff and. Um, at the end, we're walking home, and there's coconut trees huh. in the graveyard. What? So I was like, I'm coconut, gra- like coconut graveyard, coconut. Like yeah, I love totally that. That's this. amazing. So I grabbed four coconuts from the graveyard uh-huh. and then busted them open. We made no bake cookies from them. So That's no, I had kidding. coconut graveyard. I was no waiting bake cookies. I was waiting That's for the awesome. twist, and were for you to tell me that one of it wasn't a coconut at all. <laughs> <laughs> they were all coconuts. Okay. Yes, I, I lived in Florida, so I know coconuts. But, all right. Um, Oh, that's too cool. Mm-hmm. Man. Man, now I just want to... Uh, uh, okay, here's what I thought you were going to say. I thought... I, I had an image in my head of you just chilling underneath a, like, awesome, uh, like, I don't know, statuesque uh, gravestone, and you just have, like, the little coconut in your hand, <laughs> got the little straw there, and just... Yeah. Yeah. I'm living the life. And it was the sweetest <laughs> Mai Tai he ever had. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, the ghosts were jealous. Right. <laughs> well, because actually say in Savannah, too, um, at, at that point in time, uh, unfortunately, the um, slaves, oftentimes the Gullah Geechee people, were, they didn't have proper burials, and so they were buried in the yards. And so, That's so sad. Yeah, it's terrible. Mm. Terrible. And the crazy thing about for decades afterwards, as trees would come up and uproot it, you would get you get other people yeah. coming yeah. along yeah. That's with so it too, sad, man. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely horrible. How just... can you have? I mean, that's not resting these, in peace. And that's these are no, years of history of other people, mm-hmm. you know, loved ones of other people that yeah. maybe don't know where their loved ones are buried because they're just tossed out there. Yeah, among and other like things. I said, this has been and like I said, <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. We're taking a uh, parenting break. Yeah, I'm sorry. So where were we? <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. So uh, something about you had mentioned about Georgia and how pretty it was, and, and also the terrible things that they did to some of the slaves there. And, yeah. Yeah. And like I said, it really puts into perspective when you look at it in a history book and you hear the stories. And you're like, oh, that was 150 years ago. That was you know X amount of years ago. And mm-hmm. you know it's easier to say that when you're not there and the history is not staring you right in the face yeah exactly it's, yeah yeah absolutely well i guess that brings us to you yeah so uh <laughs> my uh experiences come straight from you know latino culture because i am latina uh if y'all didn't realize it by now <laughs> with all my references of it uh, but anyway, uh, one of the biggest things in Latina culture or L- Latino culture is uh, the story of La Llorona. Unfortunately, we got a James Wan version of said story. <laughs> Did not do it any justice. I'm very disappointed. Uh, there's other uh, La- better La Llorona stories they that are out there. Puppet in it? Jesus Christ, they might as well. <laughs> I didn't even watch it. I didn't even watch it. I was like, pass. Yeah. Oh, no, like, pass. It, that's the thing. I only saw trailers of it, and I'm like, I'm done. Yeah. No, I don't need this in my life. There's other better ones that are actually done by uh, people from Mexico. So it's like, yeah. I'll take yeah. those over yes. whatever the, this is, <laughs> garbage this is. Um, so actually, my story has to do with La Llorona, okay. and I have actually seen this crazy woman. Uh, just a little bit, though, I'm going to back up a little bit. If you don't know the story of La Llorona, uh, basically the story goes that she was the most beautiful woman in Mexico. Um, and when she was very young, she met this ranchero, or a guy that um, worked on a ranch who was very rich uh, from, you know, herding in the cattle and all that. And they the two of them met and he instantly fell in love with her and they got married so fast and so hard they were just two young people in love uh she unfortunately didn't know exactly what she was walking into and they had two young children together 
slow down, Lava. Yeah, Lava. right. Don't, ma- don't marry so hard. <laughs> right? Yeah, slow down. It's okay. I know that you, you grew right. up in poverty, but it's, it's okay. Mm-hmm. Basically, when... Uh, when she had her two children, uh, the ranchero, or her husband, uh, would only come and visit the kids and didn't really care much about her. She was kind of sidelined completely. Oh. Hmm. He only ever wanted to see the children. And her being as beautiful as she is and everybody just yeah. kind of, you know, telling her, yeah, you're going to make a good mom. You're beautiful. You're going to make this wonderful bride and all this kind of really got to her. And she just thought, am I not beautiful anymore? Does he not love me? Like, what's going on? And it got to the point where she just snapped and she had enough of it. And he basically said, I'm going to leave you. I love my children, but I'm going to leave you with them and I'm going to go marry someone else. Oh. (laughs) So when that happened, she completely snapped and she took her children to a riverside where she decided to drown them. I don't like where this is going. She, had to Andrew you know, some. she did. And she decided to drown them because if he couldn't have them, no one would mm-hmm. in a fit of rage. And then once she realized what she did, she snapped out of it. And she's like, oh, my goodness, what what have I done? Yeah. And she drowned herself as well. Yeah. So the story goes, in, like with superstition, that um, when she went up to heaven, um, she was basically barred from the gates and was said, no, you cannot return to heaven until you find your children. That's your punishment. Hmm. So the story goes that she is now here on earth. Her spirit is wandering around looking for her children that floated down the river. Wow. So this is also the story that parents use to tell their children, don't you dare stay late at night, out late at night. Don't you dare go near water. Don't you dare, oh. uh, you know, if you hear somebody singing or something, don't you go near them. The stranger danger. The ultimate, ultimate cautionary it, tale. Yep, exactly. And uh, just in general, even when you're at, like a teenager, better not stay out late. La Irona could get you. You don't know. Yeah. <laughs> she, wow. She's everywhere. You have no idea. Um, so basically the, it's mostly told to children because it's like, well, she's looking for her kids. She's going to get you. Yeah. She wants you. She wants her children. She's back. so desperate. Now any kid will do. Yep, <laughs> exactly. So and a lot of times that's what, uh, you know, drownings are blamed on mm. is La Llorona caught them wow. uh, and kind of enticed them in kind of like a siren of sorts. Yeah. Um, cause that's what she does. She's depicted. And honestly, uh, the thing is with La Llorona is she is not only a Mexican tale, but she has also transcended American stories as well. Yeah. She's also known in America as the lady in white. Mm. Um, mm. and we believe that she is one and the same entity. Um, wow. so as a matter of fact, I have a story and I have seen her actually. So has Luke. So has my husband. Hmm. Uh, so this was a weird experience. I like this. It's going to be much juicier than mine. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> so this is going to be an interesting experience because uh, we were coming home. I want to say it was from a concert. Uh, my husband and I, uh, I was still living with my parents at the time in Milford. And uh, my parents said, well, you got to get home by a certain time. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll make sure I get home. They never threatened me. To be honest, they never threatened me with a la uh, mm-hmm. It was more so my abuela would mention it briefly, but she would never like push it. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. To the point where I'd be terrified. But because she already knew I was I was a wuss as a child. So, yeah, she didn't need to bring out the big guns. <laughs> no, no, no. As soon as you like punished me, I would just <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> so like there was no need for that. But like, um, you know, be home at a certain time. And I'm like, oh, yeah, OK, we'll we'll be home. Yeah. I was a little late coming home because uh, it was like a concert it got out late. And so Luke was driving me home um, and uh Ah, there is, on the way from his house to Milford, there's a little lake that's Mm kind of off to the side near Camelot, actually Camelot Lake. Across from Camelot Lake is a mini pond. It's usually a duck pond and it's near the Maple Leaf Factory, as a Mm -hmm. matter of fact. And if you don't know the Maple Leaf Factory in Indiana, it's basically where they chop up ducks. (laughs) It's Mm -hmm. a duck factory. Uh, But anyway, this little mini pond is right there. And as we're coming up to it, 
we see a kind of figure in the distance, but we don't think too much about it. You know, it could be it could be a stop sign. It could be you know right, whatever right, anything. Yeah. We get closer to it to the point where like you're literally about ready to like go past you know, and you can kind of you know there's something there. We see her plain as day, lady with long black hair, white dress. No shoes. Wow. Walking on the side of the road, like, on my passenger side, I'm like, oh my god, it's her. And Was she beautiful? Uh, we couldn't see her face. Oh, okay. It was blowing in the wind, yeah. so you couldn't see her hair, because her hair was blow- covering up her face. And I like I said- if you stopped. Uh-uh. <laughs> I was like, Luke, keep driving, keep driving, we, we gotta go, we gotta go. And he's like, oh my god, who is that? Like, what's going on? And I'm like, that's like, you're like, you, you drive, drive, let, let, me, let me get home. <laughs> this is wow. what's gonna happen, let me get home. Because she was just, like, walking very slowly. Like right on the side of the road? On the side of the road. Wow. And we were looking around, too, because I'm just like, just to double check, like, was there a party going on? Was something yeah, else like, going on? Yeah, like, was there a car, like, pulled off somewhere and she was yeah. just going back to it? Like No, nothing. Huh. Um, like, it's dead of night. And I'm just like, oh, nope, nope. Yeah. And Luke even, like, he's like... I actually did go back past it. I'm like, because I, I, this was like years later that he admitted. He's mm-hmm. like, I did actually go back past it. I just told you that I didn't because I know you're superstitious. <laughs> and 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 um, he goes, uh, no, she wasn't there. Now she's gone. I'm like, no, that's no, great. that's, that's wow. terrifying. Saw it, you know, <clears throat> yeah. So we can both say we saw La Llorona. And as a matter of fact, my father also had a story of seeing La Llorona when uh, he was a child. Mm. As a matter of mm. fact, or I guess, no, he heard the story, but it was from my um, uncles. He wasn't actually there, but apparently one of my other uncles almost got stolen by La Llorona. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Basically, right. long story short is that they were out riding their bikes. They took their younger brother along with them, which was mm. not my dad. It was actually my the middle child at the time, my other uncle, uh, Chewy. And uh, <clears throat> they took they took him out. And, of course, you know, older brothers are just <laughs> whatever, messing around. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden in the distance, uh, my, my Theo Johnny saw in the distance uh, a, a figure in white. And he's like, oh, no. And he tells like his white friends, get get back on the bikes. We gotta leave. We gotta leave. Yeah. This isn't good. There's somebody across the way, and it's not good. No. And so he's so they all bolt. And apparently they're riding as fast as they can. They look behind them and they forgot Chewy, the young the youngest huh. uh, sibling huh. at the time. And he's like, Mom, uh, I, Mom would never forgive me if I didn't come back oh, with my son, yeah, you know, no, with her no. son, with her littlest child. And so he goes back and apparently La Llorona was like speed walking in the water towards Chewy. Get out. That's crazy. Yeah. And so like speed walking in the water, like hovering over the water. Yeah, like. And like it was like going at fast speeds. And so he just like. And, and Chewie apparently is just standing there, like, mesmerized by her. And, like, he just grabs Chewie, grabs the, doesn't, I guess he didn't leave. I can't remember if he left the bike or he got the bike or something. But somehow they got back and they're like, nope, nope, <laughs> leave her alone. <laughs> we got to go home. Wow. I got to make sure you're safe. So, yeah, my on my uh, dad's side, La Llorona did make an appearance. So... Yeah, some scary stuff. And apparently she's been spotted in Syracuse a couple times. Really? In the lake. Mm-hmm. Huh. So she's she's around. <sighs> Searching bodies of water, trying to find the babes. Yep. Wow. <laughs> trying, trying to find her two kids, so. So, to That's tie funny. the legend off, do we ever find out what happened to the rancher after he goes through and... Right? Who knows? Maybe he... I don't know. I know that I don't know what happened to the rancher. Yeah. I would hope I that I he'd curious, be like... But- uh, wife, what what the heck? Yeah, <laughs> like, like yeah. What the heck's going on? Wow. How would you do this? <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. So yeah, and and that's just. <laughs> I'm sure he probably wouldn't ask himself why if he looked in the mirror a little bit. <laughs> right. It's like, oh, oh, maybe it was me. I, I might have contributed to that a little bit. <laughs> uh, whoops. <laughs> oh. <Uh-oh. laughs> right. So yeah. Yeah, so that's the story of La Llorona. Like I said, it's just so interesting that how it has evolved over time. And I guess it even has 
further roots in Aztec uh, Aztec uh, legend as well. Huh. I don't know all the information about right. that. I actually have to look into that a little bit more. Yeah. I need to brush up on my own like Latino history. Maybe we'll have one podcast just to dedicate to Latino history there or something. Go. I'm cool with that. I would love to hear more about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Absolutely. yeah, she's definitely, uh, I feel like I'm going to use this story at some point in my life with Casper. It's like, oh yeah, that, there's too much gold in there. Not to, yeah, you, not to you use got that. you got a little spice of Latino in you, and also you're German, so you got the two scariest cultures coming together. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. So it's like you're gonna be warned. You're gonna be well uh, educated mm-hmm. yeah. in what you should and shouldn't do. <laughs> Definitely, and my my little one is uh, 25% Mexican. You'd never know it. Oh, I didn't know that. You'd never oh, know. Oh, that's it. awesome. Yeah, you'd uh, never hey, know that's, it. Hmm. That's if I Casper showed your too. baby pictures, straight up dark hair, dark features, really, look like a little Mexican baby, <laughs> oh. and you would never. Oh. My, my daughter now does not look <laughs> that's at nuts. all Mexican because Casper's also one yeah. fourth, so that's yeah. neat. Interesting. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say Leo's quarter Italian. You know, I'm ha- I'm half that, so it's kind of kind of funny. Like, yeah, look at that. Like when I when I see Casper, I wouldn't guess I wouldn't guess that he was quarter Latino on it. Just <laughs> right when I look at he's it, it's so just, pale. Oh, okay, yes, and Casper's <laughs> a fitting name for him. Right? <laughs> he's a friendly little ghost. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I guess the real question to transition is, um, what kind of drew us to understanding what the paranormal was and also what horror was in general. Mm-hmm. Like, what were our first experiences with it growing up as kids? Yeah. Hmm. Um, for me, a lot of it comes from my middle brother. Um, I've kind of said that before. Mm-hmm. As far as paranormal stuff, like, I, I, I didn't really have much, you know, like paranormal experiences when I was younger or whatever. Nothing like that. Um, can't say I had any really personally, but like, you know my entry into like horror movies was um, all through my brother, like Phantasm early on Mm -hmm. was one that I got introduced to Uh, people under the stairs, which is one of my all time favorites, um, which they recently remastered in 4k. Did they really? Yes. It's been out about, I don't want to say three weeks. And that um, is such a good film. I love that one. Yeah. I'm underrated. Talk about the new releases. But, underrated um, Wes Craven. Yeah. And, in early Friday, the 13th, um, and some nightmare on Elm street and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Um, those are what stick out from my early youth and stuff. Cause you know, and it was that way with music too. So a lot of the music was pretty much handed down from my brother and, that's kind of how I got started on all of it. Mm-hmm. Oh, but oh you and were... Critters. Critters and oh, Ghoulies. Critters. Oh, yeah. Critters and Those Ghoulies. are good. Yes. Oh, my gosh, Critters man. and Ghoulies were also there, too. Like, that, it all kind of came, all of those movies were just, like, what I was pretty much brought up on. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, so for me, you know, a lot of it drew on the fact that we didn't really have a movie filter in our house. And so as a child, I was exposed to seeing movies that might have been a little above my pay grade. <laughs> yeah. uh, Maturity-wise, you know, you mentioned Ghoulies, Gremlins with one, yeah, where, you know, I yeah. signed on board for cute little gizmo. And then you don't even realize those little evil guys are going to start popping up later <laughs> in the movie. So, of course, that threw little old me in a loop. I know I'm kind of aging myself with these references here. Uh, the, <laughs> no other, the other, the, other uh, the, the big one... Um, Again, not from paranormal aspect, but from a horror perspective, I can still remember this one vividly. Was watching a uh, creep show. Yeah. Oh, so nice. the set, the there were two there were two in particular that stuck with me. I think one was from the first creep show, one was from the second, and. You know, the one from the second that always got me was when it's the teenagers on the raft. The, the raft and the blob was coming oh, through. Oh yeah. man. That one always threw me for a loop, and so I was really scared of leeches for a long time after that. Yeah. Just because it reminded me of the little little versions of the stuff that came through no the raft. Mm-hmm. The worst was on the uh, first one. So, you know, there's that reclusive billionaire. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of the Howard Hughes, you know, uh-huh. Mr. Burns in that Simpsons Casino yeah. episode-esque. Yep. One where, you know, he's completely isolated, completely pristine, clean room, and all of a sudden there is just a massive infestation of cockroaches, and this is in the era before uh, CGI, of course, and so as a kid, just seeing this room and him get just overwhelmed with these 
aliens of but of cockroaches yeah. threw me for loop for years afterwards and unfortunately my uh older sister angie i love you dearly but <laughs> if she would own this man she would she she saw that and she tormented me for years afterwards and so when we go out to the family farm it might be an earwig and a little cassette case just <laughs> dangling right by my face to like you know spook me out but good grief if that was not a source of kryptonite for years after the fact <laughs> like b- bugs like that i'm i was fine with most of them but if it got into kind of the cockroach earwiggy centipede <laughs> family yeah. i wanted absolutely nothing to do with it and so that was uh my experience on that i want to say i was maybe six or seven when i saw that yeah. When I saw Creep, when I saw Creep Show, one and two. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So hey, yeah. the you know Marvels of having uh, I think it was HBO at the time. Oh they were man, that they had the best. And once back you know after eight, eight o'clock, hey, HBO. you never mm-hmm, you yeah. never knew what was going to come on, but it darn sure was not going to be kid friendly. <laughs> so <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> then uh, the segue after that was then I I jumped right into Tales from the Crypt, which you know nice, oftentimes yeah. had a lot more fun as- aspects to it. Yeah. And so having gone from Creep Show to Tales from the Crypt, I was pretty much desensitized by that stage yeah. in the game <laughs> as long as you didn't chuck a cockroach at me <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's awesome now when you said the raft episode i just remember i used to live out on the lake lake wawasee ish area mm. there was like a little raft or not a raft but like a little dock that would go out to like the edge of the water and i remember seeing that raft <laughs> part and i just was like okay gotta stand on your tiptoes can't go in between them cracks otherwise Don't you're gonna crack. get you Don't get the cracks. <laughs> <laughs> so for me i have mentioned on the show before um my introduction to horror was through my dad my dad is a big influence on my life as well as the type of music that i like which I talked about before mm-hmm. um he got me introduced with um nightmare on elm street freddy was his favorite character and also my dad was an artist so he loved fx Mm. Uh, and he was good at it. He used to dress up as the Terminator and would put, and this was, mind you, this was before, like, you could buy, like, the the makeup stuff. Yeah. He made his own. Yeah, he made his own, like, you know, rubber and different stuff to put on his face. And then he would do his own FX using different, you know, uh, paints wow. and stuff like that. He was talented. So he would dress up once in a while either as Freddy, Beetlejuice, or as um, uh, the Terminator. The Terminator was his favorite look to do. Oh, wow, you and got it, pictures of that? I wish I had them. Oh, that'd be uh, so cool. He was just cr- stupid talented uh, at, at artwork. And I think I, I got some of my creativity from that. Uh, but really, my love of horror stemmed from my father. Um, and I will never forget the first time I watched uh, Nightmare on Elm Street with him. It was the first one. I didn't think anything of it. It was a good time. But I tell you what, the first time I watched Sleeping Beauty, the Disney one, and that dragon appeared, never again. Huh. Not watching it. Nope. Uh, wow. Yep. I w- I, that's why I mean that's when funny. I'm a like, wuss. <laughs> yeah, so Nightmare on Elm Street, A-OK, fine. but then Sleeping yeah. Beauty, the line's drawn. Like, nope, nope. Didn't want to watch it ever again. As a matter of fact, it took me until... So interesting. Until I was probably like six, seven years old that I watched it again. I was so terrified of that wow. dragon. <laughs> that's crazy. The same goes with like the witch from Snow White. Freaked mm-hmm. me out, man. Couldn't watch it again. Wow. Mm-hmm. Dang, that's crazy. So, like, and that kind of leads me into the next thing for you all before we bring the kids down yeah. is um, would you feel comfortable introducing your children to horror if they were interested in it? So, my daughter already has. <clears throat> She's already been interested or introduced to it, I should say. Mm-hmm. Um, she has a love hate relationship with Chucky. <laughs> so she definitely knows about Chucky and child's play and all that sort of stuff. Um, she still is a little bit apprehensive and she's only six. So I have to be careful. Um, mm-hmm. But yes, she, she is aware of what horror movies are and stuff. And she's seen my collection. Yeah. So, I mean, she's seen my masks and my toys and my figures and my movies. And so she definitely knows like dad is into horror. So she's like grown that. up around it. Kind yeah. of similar to mm-hmm. how I was with my dad. Yeah. He had, so for him <clears throat> through his artwork, he would do Freddy Cougar patches that he would put on his jackets and stuff like that. Or sometimes he'd be always drawing or doodling and he would do a picture of Freddy Cougar. So I yeah. always kind of had in my mind, Dad likes that. 
you yeah. know? So it was just normal. So that kind know, of puts an element of safety to it, because you're like, hey, if Dad likes this, it can't be all that bad. Right. So it, yeah. you know, it's a level of security one wouldn't expect out of Freddy Krueger. Freddy Kru- right. Because no of kidding. the association with it, you're yeah. like, hey, this isn't really all that threatening at all. This is pretty cool. Exactly. Especially when you see your dad doing the FX stuff. Too. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's what that is. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's neat. That's it's like, hey, now me and Pops it. have something in common. Like, yeah. it's you yeah. know, something to bond over as opposed to you know, hey, here's this this your guy who's going to kill you when you're asleep. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> That's awesome. So how about for you? Uh, for With Leo. Yeah, so... I know I've kind of been a... <laughs> yeah, you know... <laughs> like, I forced it a little yeah, bit. I, I'm I can't, sorry. I can't even say that you really forced it so much. I mean, yeah, there was the myth gauging maybe of, like, what he might have been ready for for Krampus, but... Let me tell you, Ivy, uh, he's been clamoring to see that movie again, swearing up and that. down. He's awesome. ready for it. Yeah. I'm the one pumping the brakes to say, all right, <laughs> just get, take a little more time before you revisit it. But, you know, but he's always had that kind of interest to him. And, you know, with today's media content, <laughs> you know, we try um, – my wife and I, we always want to watch what they're watching yeah. so we know what they're consuming. And so one of the things that got him you know, interested is this uh, ch- YouTube channel called Addie and Jillian where they reenact little horror things, but oh, it's by kids in okay. a, hor- a kid-friendly yeah. way where it's a little bit spooky, but it's in a way that's easy to digest for a kid. So it's yeah. Yeah. pint-sized spookiness when you're going through it. It's like... a like sister team with their dad that go through and film these little skits oh, and movies, awesome. like home movies together and so you would absolutely love watching that and then you know basically we would you know scary parts on kids movies oddly enough like there was a point in time in uh, Moana where Tafiti the the uh, volcanic oh the goddess the volcanic yeah. goddess at the end of the movie that s- sequence could kind of like spook him out a little bit of it but you know the thing about the thing about Leo is even when he's scared, he's scared at the time, but then he wants to revisit it. Uh-huh. And so it's kind of like he's yeah. always had kind of a knack and a taste for it. And so basically what the toughest thing Hope and I have had to do is just to make sure that we don't let him consume too much too fast and mm-hmm. as i said before something above his pay grade we don't want him to get scarred yeah but right. you know hey you know if you if your kid's gonna be into it an occasional nightmare is gonna be par for the course yeah so we try to give him that little bit of freedom to choose what he wants to watch well at the same point in time not completely you know giving in and letting him watch absolutely everything he's interested yeah. in right but it's it's always that balancing act in that mm-hmm. line of you know i remember when i was a kid and that joy of it of seeing like man i don't know if i should be watching right. this i got but, away with it right like hey i got i totally got away with this and you know to go through and do it and it's fun to be scared sometimes when mm-hmm. you're a kid like that and so you know there's plenty of nights where you know, hope and i are down there at bedtime with the boys just so mm-hmm. somebody's there to sit with them before they fall asleep yeah and we ha- haven't had a problem whatsoever kind of feeding into that kind of like fascination that he's had with it. It's awesome. And so it's kind of like we just want him to use that and use that as a fuel for his own creativity and his own growth. And, you know, sure enough, if seeing that hasn't helped him turn into a more courageous little boy. Yeah. No, awesome. And it's, yeah. and like I said, it, and you know, it's not one of those things to where we are like, you know, like, Hey, Leo, we're watching horror movies today. Mm-hmm. We really try to let it, flow naturally off what he's in the mood for yeah, in order to what absolutely. we watch and what we do and let him develop into his own little person <laughs> along too without forcing what you know we think he should ought right. to be consuming on yeah. it so yeah you know, we try to give that little freedom and flexibility in there too but then you gotta keep one eye open because with all the content that's out there right and the ease of access on it it's so easy for a kid to see something that they shouldn't be seeing yeah. now mm-hmm. and so that's always a tough part about parenting and wanting to have them to have access to the cool stuff but you know hey yeah, you want, if you want to see them that's a, that's a couple years ahead of time you know fine whatever but yeah you know, we just we you just got to be invested in it and be sure you put your time into keeping a good and keeping a good eye on it yep. so yeah but all in all so far it's going it you know He's enjoying the way that he's coming up with it. And, you know, I probably hear about once every couple of weeks when he's going to watch Krampus again. Oh, that's and that, sweet. And, yeah, and so he, you know, it, it's kind of funny. He's still ready to go to go right back and to we'll go do right it. back at it again. Yeah. We'll do it. Christmas, uh, von Krampus. We'll do yeah. it again. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I was going to say he'd probably be ready for it. And so it's, you know, uh, and one of those other things is that so many uh, different movies now, even kids' films, have horror elements that are okay. kind of into it yeah. mm-hmm. that you don't necessarily expect are going to be there. So even if you don't actively show your kids 
full-on horror movies per se. They're mm-hmm. already digesting some of the elements of that and seeing it as part of a broader whole in some of these pictures. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I took it for granted that a kid would – I didn't think twice that a kid might find the volcanic goddess – and yeah. Moana wanted to be scary, but it turns out that's actually a pretty common thing. Yeah. You know, it's just like, as you know, a grown-up scene, you don't necessarily appreciate how much of those elements that they put into it in order to villain build. You mentioned Sleeping Beauty yeah. as well. Yeah. Maleficent you know, scared me. Maleficent, <laughs> yeah. You're totally not the, fir- the only person that that mm-hmm. you know, happened to, too. And so it's just kind of interesting how those elements are even in the kids' media that's out there that they're consuming to where even if parents say, ah, you know, I don't want my kid to watch this, it's you know, too scary. I'm like, it's also going to be out there in so uh-huh. much of the media they consume. So yeah. I think teaching them how to consume that and mm-hmm. view it in a holistic, healthy way mm-hmm. as part of the broader story, I think yeah. that's really the way to play it. And so that's why, you know, Hope and I are all for letting him indulge at to a point. <laughs> yeah, right. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm learning from you two veterans because my son, as of this That might be dangerous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My son, as of this recording, is only five months, mm-hmm. uh, so I don't know where the future is going to bring him. I can just tell you this. He really loved Evil Dead Rice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that child enjoyed it. He mm-hmm. was laughing and giggling at the screen, and I'm like, you don't know what's going on, yep. do you? <laughs> He's a, uh, Leo's had at least two or three different um, characters at the gym that they will no longer print off for him to color. Because That's funny. Like, Huggy Wuggy and the Rainbow Friends are oh, not, I a, love that. Are not and, uh, Five Nights at Freddy yeah. are not appropriate for the gym daycare That's to wonderful. print off in color. Yeah. So. <laughs> He's well on his way. Uh, He's currently playing Hello Neighbor. At home oh, too, wow. So. Oh, wonderful. Well, uh, I think at this point, point. Yeah. It's yep. a good time to bring the kids down. All right. We'll stop for a little bit and reevaluate. All right. Well, now we got some special guests with us, like we've mentioned. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves? Why don't we start with you first, huh? Right. I'm, I'm so, so my name is Coraline. All right. Hi, Coraline. Thank you for joining us. And and we got, what's your name? Glad. Bread. Bread. Nice to meet you, Bread. Yeah. Hi, Bread. Oh, up, Bread? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm and of course, I, I got my little one here. He may grunt and moan a couple times. Like I said, he's All five right. months. But this is Casper. He's just chilling. Sweet. <laughs> Yeah, so we got a couple questions for y'all. Maybe you can help us, uh, you know, answer a couple of these. Um, but what what do you find to be scary? Like, what is scary to you? Yeah, we'll go and say more. Go ahead. About, uh, what? What? Oh no, it's fine. Yeah, it's, you, you can <laughs> Doing go. a backflip. Yep. Yeah. So go ahead, bread. Yep. So honest answer, bread. <laughs> Here you go. Back up and talk. I don't know how this works. No, it's no, okay. It's okay. Just, Literally, just you just talk to the air. Yep. And answer honestly. So, yeah. what do you what do you find scary? Yeah, honest question. From is doing a backflip, eating paper, and putting bread on his face. Wow! And, t- and turning him into bread grimace, and and then him porking <laughs> while doing a backflip at the same time. Oh, that's oh. terrifying. That, that is man. pretty scary. That is pretty scary. <laughs> Just grimace twerking. Right? <laughs> He's twerking. Yeah. You, you, yeah, you He's got an interesting there. shape to twerk. I yeah. will give him that. Right. And you know, he's actually like a taste bud. Did you did you know that? That's I did not know. That, that's, what, that's what he's supposed really? to be. He's a taste bud that feeds off of milkshakes. Oh yeah, I, I've seen I the never t- knew the origin I, story. Yeah, you know. seen the trend? and he comes from Grimace Island. Hey guys, okay. have you seen the all trend right. where people drink it and pretend to die, but they don't actually, and they get their mouths all covered? Like yeah, shake. I've seen yep. that. That's crazy. <laughs> I so that's not. terrifying. All right, I so yeah, so Leo, legit. What do you think is scary in movies that you see? Like, what's the last movie that scared you? And it doesn't necessarily have to be a scary movie. Yep. It can just be yeah. something that kind of freak you out. Yeah. Jack Jack multiplying himself into a banana. Yeah, that was freaky. Yeah, and that and he's just doing backflips in a banana suit on on skies. Where are you? Man. Yeah, I don't know. That. <laughs> That's not the version of the Incredible. I, I, I don't think I know that version of the Incredible. Yeah. I just make things up. You just what make do you things want up. <laughs> That's fine. All right. Awesome. Well, we got a future in politics here. Well, exactly. Just- <laughs> <laughs> well, Coraline, what do you find what scary? You and it can be scary? legit. Like, what do you what do you think is terrifying? Um, yeah, yeah, um. 
Um, uh, so, so I, I, I for real saw something on, on YouTube, uh, when, when I was watching on the Exa, um, I, I saw, I saw this girl playing, um, hipscotch and, and, and then, and, and then, and then whole, and then whole find is hipscotch, you know, kissing on, on the hipscotch with no number. <gasps> really? Yeah, yeah, and, 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 and I put whole hand oil yag on it, and, and, and it turned into a skinwalker. Yak, yak, whole, yak, really? twist whole head open. Yeah. And, 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 and for oh, real the guts. <laughs> oh, you mean the skin stealers? Skin stealers? No. So in, in the backroom level, if you die because of him, he literally takes your skin. That is and, not scary. And, no, no, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not talking about chase. that. That's okay. That's okay. Right. Not yeah. talking about that. No, no but that's, that. okay. that's still scary. But yeah, go ahead. Ooh, Ooh, yeah, he loves explain more. <laughs> um, that's and you too. Okay. What that's about, it. So I okay. know personally that you are kind of afraid of Chucky. You want to talk about Chucky a little? Ooh, yeah, him. Chucky. Yeah, which ones? <laughs> I like Chucky. You like Chucky? I love Chucky for that. I don't watch Chucky show. Okay. I guess I last time I watched the winning. Chucky show. So, Ohio's so. master. Yeah. Nice. And it's cool. Ohio's cool. master. Where did, where did you watch a Chucky show? He did not die. Um, at, 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 at my mom's house. He literally house. defeated me. Nice. Okay. With Tegan? If it's mm. with your sister. Yeah. Okay, How cool. do you feel about Chucky? I know you we watched a couple the Chucky movies. Together. Do you remember oh, when I... I know. Just a second. Let me... Yeah. Do you remember when I showed you a, f a couple clips about the Chucky movies and you kind of liked it? Just give me one. Okay. Just Bye. one second. One second. Okay, so other than that, what about... You were telling me the other day about Coraline, the Coraline movie. Did you find that scary? Um, no. No. No, you just watched Coraline as well, Leo. Did you think it was scary? Heck no, nah, bro. I've seen scarier. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's scary. All right, all right, Mr. Bates. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so, 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 so what's the scariest scary. movie? Heck no. Nah. Heck no. Nah. Heck no, bro. So what's the scariest movie you've seen? <laughs> I'm not the same thing. I have no scariness. I have no weakness. You have no weakness. No, that's not nice. a second. No, keep this here. I, I got okay. a friend. All right, cool. Let's show, show us your friend. Oh, I see. That's clever. <laughs> Gun down Chucky. Uh, there you go. So, I guess you will die. All right. here's something <laughs> that's a little bit more of like a uh, legit you will question. You die because of my phone right. But what is the first, um, well, let's see here. Mm, when was the first time that you remember feeling scared? And it doesn't have to be about a movie. It could be about a personal experience that you had. Like maybe was it seeing a spider? Was it being in the dark? What was it that really scared you, like, when you were younger? Do you have something, Leo? Moana twerking. <laughs> I think there was a part in Moana, but I don't think there was a part where she was twerking. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so on that one. Yeah. <laughs> and that she was just floating away into space. That's was terrifying. And then she got, and then she turned into the moon, and then she turned, and then she had moon powers, and then she smashed Jason with the moon of her powers. Wow, <laughs> I didn't know that. You're just creating your own <laughs> story, all right? Yes, I am. And, and you know, sometimes that is the scariest thing is your mind. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. What about so, you, Coraline? Yeah. What What scares you? Um, it's it's it scares it scares me like so like like when it what what. When it's when when it's when it's bedtime, it when when it's get really dark. Mm -hmm. When it get really dark, um, so I I get scared in the dark, but scared of the dark. Yeah. Yeah, and mm -hmm. and, 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 and 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 I and I and I felt something on me. Oh. And and, and and I and and I went out of my bed and turned on the lights and. And, and and it was just and it was just like a doll sitting down. Uh, it was a doll sitting down. Is that what down. it was? Was it a creepy doll? Yeah, I was like, whoa, 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 whoa! How did you <laughs> get here? Wow! Oh my goodness! <laughs> so the doll scared you, huh? But you're scared of the dark, so that would be a fear yeah. of yours. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a I valid fear. I mean, it I remember having that as a kid. It was, it was it was touching me on the stomach. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Ooh. I want to throw that doll in the trash. <laughs> in the trash. Or shoot him with my gun. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, right in the trash. That's a great. That's a great idea. So you can. So you can just shoot in the trash, like like boom, <laughs> shoot straight. 
Like that. All that right. makes sense. Awesome. So, um, let's see here. So here's something. Um, do you have a favorite horror movie that you really like? Uh, specifically, a horror movie that you like. Or something that's scary. So think, like, Leo, think about the ones that you watched here with us, or maybe that you watched with your dad. So, for example, like, Krampus. Krampus. Uh, Gr- or Gremlins. Did you watch uh, Beetlejuice yet? Has he? I think so, yeah. When I watched Beetlejuice. Yeah, did you? It, it's, it, I think it's just the movie of a guy just eating Beetlejuice. <laughs> yeah. I think that's, that's pretty scary. Mm-hmm. But I, uh, I'm you, still begging yeah. my parents to let me watch it, but they still won't. Yeah, let so me. The Krampus? Look, yeah, Krampus. Yeah. It. Oh, it. Oh. So what do you like about it? Tell me about that. I can't watch it. That's what. What, what draws you to it? What that's what draws want, them to it. What makes you want to watch it? Besides <laughs> the fact that mommy and daddy said not yet. What is it that makes you want to watch it? It has a balloon. Yeah. Oh. Balloons are that, intriguing. No, that is enticing about them. Yeah. Also, uh, my favorite movie is Clampus. I like when he takes the cookie yeah. and just logs and just falls asleep and then just flies up to the moon and then falls to the moon out. Yeah. <laughs> and, then he, and, and then he just gets the sun and put it and okay. and puts every single thing in the universe and throws the black hole at the su- every the whole universe. So then there. That's a different version. Yeah, that that's, that's yeah. crazy. Is that the director's cut? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about you? What about you, Coraline? Because um, you know who Pennywise is. Yeah, you kept oh, talking yeah. to yeah, him. Yeah, you were talking days. about him the other day. Yeah, that's the clown um, for me. So Penny, Penny, Pennywise is a creepy, creepy, um, a stupid, creepy, creepy, a clown, and 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 he and he carries a balloon every single time to 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 real kids to kill them. <gasps> and does he eat them? Oh yeah, yeah. Where where does he live? He has like a million um, um, teeth. And, and the yeah. sewers and the sewers. He like, he's like. Yeah. So is that scary to you? Um, no. No, that's no. my favorite. That guy. That's her favorite. Mm-hmm. It's your favorite. Right. So nice. I don't know a lot about Pennywise if you've never seen it. Mm. <laughs> 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 he, lives in the he lives in the sewers. Yeah, you mentioned that, and he's gonna hang out with the Ninja Turtles, right? Yeah. <laughs> Do you see Georgie? I mean, so ask who's Georgie. Mm-hmm. Who's Georgie? Talks about it. Okay, well then. We won't That's all right. Yeah. We, we spoilers. Yeah, we don't need to talk about Georgie yeah. right now. Who the heck is Georgie? Yeah. <laughs> Who the heck is He's Georgie? A character from the. All right, movie. so they yeah. haven't seen that. Much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll get to that though. Uh, but Bad is Georgie. Bad is Ducky. Yeah. What? <laughs> no, he Pennywise. Whenever he takes the bath, he gets his rubber ducky and does a backflip. Into someone's pool, and then they freak out. You love your backflips. Yeah, yeah, backflips. <laughs> and then he just throws skies on at his face. Horror and parkour. Yeah, I love that. Horror That's parkour. Horror parkour. Parkour. <laughs> parkour. That's good. Um, so. Here's something to ask you kids, because we actually do have other kids that will be listening in, uh, hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, with this family-friendly one. What would be your advice to give to kids that want to watch a scary movie? What do you recommend they do? Watch it time? without their parents knowing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've never done it. <laughs> I've never done it. All right, Pinocchio, your nose just went through the wall. Right. <laughs> what about you, Coraline? You, Coraline? What would you say? I don't know why no, did not go through the wall. Okay, okay, like, no, I don't know. Yeah, watch it without parents. Yeah. Or yeah, that was a pretty good one. How, how do you how do you like prepare yourself personally for a horror movie? Um, so so I I I just I just get comfy and do this to myself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ooh. yeah. Snuggle down into oh, a blanket. Yeah. That's nice. And 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 and, okay. and 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 I just put my I lean my head back and just snuggle up like this. Oh. <laughs> And do you usually do that by yourself, or do you usually do that with your one of your parents, or um um one of my parents mm. sometimes, and one without my parents sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you prefer watching horror movies with your family and friends, or do you mm. like to do it just by yourself? Like how I, do you like? I, I it? like to do it both. Both ways. Okay. Well, that's oh. good. Careful, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that kind of brings us to the last question that I have for the whole group. But um, what are some beginner horror movies that we would recommend to the audience? The kids, of course, give me your opinions as well. But what are some good 
you know, beginner, uh, first time horror movies. Gremlins, Krampus and Gremlins. Yeah, and it. Okay. But okay, which which it should we do the Tim Curry it or should we do the Bill Skarsgård it? I have no idea. He didn't know. He just knows it is it. He doesn't. It with the scary clown. Okay, Sorry. sounds good. I guess this so. Those are some good ones. I like that. And what about what you? Do you? What do you think, Coraline? Coraline. Um, <coughs> skinwalkers. Skinwalkers. <laughs> that's not even a movie. Yeah, that's a back room. A, yeah, that's a back room level. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you What do you say? Is there a movie that comes to mind? I have a feeling you would say Chucky. You think you think that a kid would no enjoy Chucky? Play. There's yeah. there's no Chucky movie. There's a whole bunch of them. There's a Why does you. Chucky movie what? believe this? That's just a, hey y'all! Is that a movie from Lucas that sat hey, right y'all? in front of your face? Hey, yo. There's seven different movies. In yeah, the yeah, yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> give me, give me, give me. <laughs> I did not know. I I thought this was just a creepy picture. Yeah, no, there's yeah, seven Chucky movies for in it. that. So, uh, adults, what would you say would be some uh, awesome movies (laughs) for kids to get started with? I would say, before you go down the full movie route, check out some of your favorite animated movies, some of the classics, like... uh, Okay. Or Ivy's case here, Sleeping Beauty, or like the sequence in Moana, for example. Try to find horror elements and some of the media that you already own to see where your kid is at. And from there, if uh, they digest that well, then I don't see a problem with something along the lines of like a gremlin. Or you could even you know, go with the old school uh, Goosebumps shows. Oh, that's or cool. Yeah, when I was a kid, there was a show called Eerie Indiana out. That was a fun, like, oh after school hero one. Yeah. Uh, and so, Luke knows. Luke remembers. Okay. Yep. And so, you know, I would focus, you know, start there and b- start there and build them up. And, you know, hey, as your kid sees what's out there, they're going to be drawn to certain lines. And from there, I got to rely on your good parental judgment that you're going to, you know, know what boundary, know what level your kid's at yeah. and, okay. you know, take it from there. So, yeah. you know, I don't have any specific recommendations beyond that. That was just, you know, examples that I would use if I was going to, you know, acclimate and have my kid dip their toe into it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Clearly with Leo, that's not how we went about things. <laughs> <laughs> Careful. But hey, that's all right. That's still the advice I'm going to give. So, you know, listen to your kid, be there for him, let them know, hey, if something gets too spooky, mommy or daddy's going to be there for you. Sit back with a big bowl of popcorn. And, you know, a lot of what's going to help your kid process it is the family aspect of having you guys there while you're while you're exposing him to it. Yep. So in reality, the best thing you can do for your kid is be there with them while they consume it. Don't let them consume these things in a vacuum. Yeah. And, you know, let their imaginations run wild on it. So if you're be there, no, if you're if you're there with them, hey, I trust your judgment on that one, folks. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, for me, I would say uh, I think Pet Cemetery is a good starter one. Oh yeah, um, more I, of like a, like a warning to kids: yeah. don't go out in the middle of the road. Yeah. Don't chase that's your a kite. Good, that's one of the best traffic warning movies I've ever right? seen. Right? No kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I, to me, Pet my Cemetery comes to mind. Be Nightmare oh. Before Christmas. That's a good. That's a good one. Oh, that's, that's a good one. That's, that's a great call. That's a great call out. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. Really good one. Yeah. Um, I would say, I mean, I'm definitely an '80s baby, so I kind of stick with well, in late '90s stuff like that. But I think Maximum Overdrive is an interesting uh, one to start off one. with. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. I would Stephen say, King classic. Yeah, here. I would say People Under the Stairs is mm-hmm. still one of my go tos, and it's not too like over the top gory. And that was kind of my thought. It was mm-hmm. more like thriller kind kind yeah. of horror. Um, I would say any one of those, or I mean, you know, Child's Play is a good one to to start off with. I will agree with my kid. Um, definitely. Mm-hmm. If uh, I may throw in something here, sure. Um, it's a strange. Str- sound, it's going to sound strange, but the, it came out last year. Spirit huh? Halloween, the movie. Oh yeah! Honestly, oh, I haven't seen that is, one. It would be a great one for a, a child because I mean it has all uh-huh. the elements of horror, but it's like it's got this filter. This kid filter. Just, yeah, this kid mm-hmm. filter that just makes it digestible for them. 
it's not as good as like let's say like uh, Hocus Pocus, but it's oh, yeah. got I'm that not, Hocus I'm Pocus. No, no, but I'm saying yeah. Yeah. it's got that yeah. Hocus Pocus kind of filter, like that Hocus Disney Hocus. kind of. Right. Movie, it's, you know? it's honestly not a bad one for a kid for a kid to start out with. Or if Hocus Pocus is too high budget for you, there's always an Ernest Scared Stupid. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't yes. 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 I'm no one is stupid here. Absolutely, <laughs> Ernest Scared Stupid's great. I'm it's not great stupid. One. No, no, no Ernest. Ernest. It's, it's, it's Ernest. called the movies. That's the name of the movie, buddy. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you, you, you got to throw gremlins. I think we can all agree with gremlins. Oh yes, yeah, I mean, look around. Gremlins, gremlins ran gremlins. all the way. Nightmare for Christmas is a great call yeah. out. <laughs> I know, definitely my recommendations would be Beetlejuice. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's an it awesome Beetlejuice. one. Beetlejuice, I still don't understand. <laughs> You'll get to see it. Yeah, I'll watch it. And I think another oh. good one that's like been coming out recently or like has introduced a lot of kids to horror recently mm-hmm. is like Monster High. Oh yeah, yeah. I, oh yeah! It's not just for girls. Mm-hmm. Chill out. You yeah. know, dudes can enjoy it too because it really yeah. introduces you to the Universal monsters. And so when you get to see these children of classic monsters interacting with each other, it's like you get to introduce to your kids like, who's that? Who's this? Who's this? The who's this? The daughter of? Who's this? The father of? And then you can point them to the original uh, Universal horror monsters. And maybe even show them the classics. Because the classics are really good. Uh, They're not scary to a degree. Mm -hmm. Though my sister would disagree because she was terrified of the Invisible Man when she was a child. Mm. Yeah. From Maddie and Julian? Nope. Yeah, but they're yeah. Well, maybe I don't know. Yeah, but it's kind of funny you mention um, Monster High because I think Hotel Transylvania also functions in a similar role yeah. of introducing and giving the monsters and the characters <laughs> to children in an easy digest yeah. form yeah. that familiarizes them with them. They can take away some of that shock value of seeing uh, them as opposed to jumping, dropping them straight into, you know, the Universal Monster movies. So that was a good call. Right, when, yeah. When can we get to the last question? Uh, this pretty yeah, much is the last question. question. Yeah. Um, it is the last question. But I think another good one would be, like, Ghostbusters or Monster House as yeah. well. Monster Squad. <laughs> yeah, Monster Squad. <laughs> Wolfman got Nards. Uh, that was a great one. Yes, yes, yes. I it's basically that. like Goonies, but with totally. horror movie monsters. Yeah, that is a good it's one. It's a good introduction. Absolutely. Kids with bikes. That yeah. Was <laughs> that was the, that was the thing in that era. You had it with like, ET, and so it's, if you had hey, that's kid, another good one. If you had kids, with, if you had kids yeah. with bikes in a movie, you were probably going to be entertained in that era. <laughs> yep. Stranger Things got that right too. <laughs> Stranger <laughs> Things. Yeah, Stranger uh, Things. Can I watch Stranger Things? I want you. I want to watch it. I, don't know, I call it tips on watching it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Netflix, if you, you want to cut us a check for if you want to cut us a check for us, uh, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, <laughs> that was completely unsolicited. <laughs> Why are you calling dibs? You've already dibs. seen it. Dibs. Oh my goodness! Well, right. I think. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, so that pretty much brings us to the end of it. Um, we appreciate anyone who has hung with us. All right, all right, Coraline. Coraline. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, we appreciate you all listening and tuning in with us. Um, we've got more coming. Uh, we appreciate your patience and listening, and hopefully uh, you all had as much fun as we did on this uh, family-friendly episode. So uh, till then, mm-hmm. we will be seeing you all a little bit later. Yeah. Do you guys want to say something? You want to say anything for you? Um, Bye-bye. Um, uh, um, Mom, Mom, I hope you're hearing this. I really love you, and I really miss you. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I hope. Oh, that was I so hope. sweet. Are you saying? Hope, 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 hope. Phoenix, hi. Hi, Gwen. <laughs> all right all right well thank you right. we'll yeah, see thank you. have a good night, night. Bye. Bye. bye bye phoenix see you next